my friends! Glad to see you made it! We're <laughs> gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, He's alive! My friends, let's start their prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to ask you for, for wisdom and guidance through this wisdom. Father, we're forever seeking a closer, better relationship with you. So we ask you, Father, to, to be our guide today and bring your Holy Spirit into this video, into the homes and the lives of whoever watches this video. Bless them, Father. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, my friends, I want to talk to you a little bit about prayer, faith, and, and like a, authority. You know, and, and sometimes in, in life, and, and with our prayers, sometimes we don't even know kind of how to pray. And, and we're always praying and asking God for something. But, but sometimes we need to pray for the solution. <laughs> You know, pray pray for the outcome, you know, and that's the thing with, with, like, you see a lot in the Psalms, in the prayers. You know, they're always praying at the outcome. We're going to praise God and sing praise to God because He's going to deliver me. He, he's going to hear me. And sometimes, you know, in life, we go in, and when we're asking for God for prayers, we're already defeated. We already think that, that God's not going to answer that prayer. And sometimes, and it, it comes from, you know, the spiritual battle within us. It's inside of us. And that battle is not against other people, but us. And there are influences, thoughts, spirits, and things that come to our, to our mind. And these things are manifested all through our flesh. You know, and, and sometimes we're, we're, we'll get depressed, we could get knocked down, beat down by, by the world, and, and we're already defeated. You, you know, we're not claiming and grabbing on to the authority God gave us. You know, we're not believing God's going to answer our, our prayer, and so we're already beat down. And other people can't can see that, that you're kind of beat down. And worldly people, they will take advantage of you and beat you down more. You use that depression to, to better their, their life or whatever it is by taking advantage of you in your situation. You know, and we got to be aware. That, that. And then we wonder, why is, is life suck, you know? Why are we always getting beat down? Why do other people, you know, take advantage of us? And sometimes it's because we've already given them the authority to do it. You know, we don't see ourselves as being worthy or having self-esteem or whatnot. And they see that. That they see that, that something's wrong. And so that gives them kind of the authority. They feel they they're probably could be a wicked person. The world and worldly people uh, do wicked things. And so they will begin to, you know, take advantage of you. And then we're, we're out there blaming everybody about how they took advantage of us. And we don't realize that, that the battle inside of us. If we would not give them the authority, but had the authority and climbed onto the authority God give us. You know, to recognize God is in our presence with us. That's, a, that's the, the main thing that separates us from God. A lot of people think God is in heaven, some, some other place, some other dimension. And, and He's not really here in our presence. Every now and then God might look down from heaven and see, you know, and oh, if you cry out loud enough, then maybe He will hear you. But that's not so. He's right there. <laughs> that's the thing, is when you realize God is right here, you know, we, we don't really, He knows what's wrong. He knows what you need. So, so we don't need to really Tell him what we need, because he knows. He's right here. He sees the struggle. He sees the pain. He understands the, the rejection. 
What we need is to grab on to that solution, <laughs> the, the faith, the promise, to them that we're going to get through it. We're going to get through the life. We're going to get through the day. And you are worthy. You're worth something to, to God. Many times in our life, we want other people to tell us how, how worthy we are. How important we are. And when we don't get that from the other people, it, it hurts us. We, we become rejected. You know, like church sometimes. And, and it's a horrible thing, but many churches, and we say, oh, we're going to go to church. I know. I'm going to go to church. And there, I will be respected. There, I will be loved. And we get there, man. No respect. No love. And what? This is the house of God. Well, how can this be? Well, I don't know how it could be, but it happens. And then we, inside of us. See, see, that's the thing. Is we got to recognize who, who, what we're playing and who we're listening to. Because even though we want their respect, they should give us respect. They should treat us like a brother and sister. But, but they too may have fought, be fighting a battle. And so they're, through their own problems, they don't respect you. They don't give you the credit due to you. But, but the thing is, is you're both working for the devil. Because the devil wants one thing. You, you not to be loved. <laughs> you not to feel cared for. You to feel worthless and unworthy of God's grace. And that's what the devil wants. To, to make you feel worthless. And, you know, us, oh, I feel rejected. I know. I ain't going to church next week. I will show them. And there again, we're playing right there listening to the devil. Because that's what the devil wants. He don't want you to go to church. And so you fulfill and you give him the authority. And who gets hurt? Who misses out? You do. We do. But we miss out. We miss out in God's instruction. We miss out in God's love. And it goes all both directions. You know? And, and where it really comes to is we don't need anybody else to tell us how loved we are, how cared we are. And that's where faith comes from. It's hard to say, hey man, I'm just as loved by God as you. And it doesn't matter what you think of me. I, I know the truth. And I know how special I am to God. And we don't need their authority. We, we don't need their permission. We don't need them to accept us. And that's faith. It's hard when, when you can't see him, can't feel him, can't touch him. And when other people are, are there at church rejecting you, it's hard because God wants to be seen. God does want to be felt and touched and heard through, through us, through the people, through, through you. And so if we're not doing that, if God can't be seen, if we're rejecting others, we're helping the devil. We're fulfilling his desire, making us feel unworthy, unloved by God. You know, isn't that what Jesus came to say? Hey, I want you guys to love one another as you would love yourself. You know, and we don't need somebody else to show us how much we love ourselves. We love somebody else because we want them to see how much God lo loves us. And the only way God can be seen, felt, touched, or known is through sharing the kindness, sharing love, sharing respect, sharing in those things. And with us and our prayers, wouldn't it be much better to pray for, hey, God, yeah, thank you, God in heaven. Tomorrow's going to be a great day because you are going to provide. Oh, Father, i got a bad arm, but, but it's going to feel great in an hour because you are going to heal me. You are. 
right? Oh, Father, where are we going today? Because I know your plan is always good. And if we follow your day, your plan, I will always have a, a good day. People will see that confidence as you grab on to God and in your faith. They see that confidence. They no longer see you as depressed, but the confidence. And through that, seeing that, you know, your unwillingness to back down, your unwillingness to, to be conquered, to see your confidence and, and they'll attach on to that. Rather than trying to further break you down, most people respond and, and want to help you uh, along your way. You know, and brothers and sisters who see somebody broke down, we need to be aware that, that you know, you never know. Even at church, you could be sitting next to somebody who, who, who thinks today could be their last day. That they're so broke down, today is my last day. And I went with all my hope to church. Maybe God will save me on my last day. And there they sat down right next to you. And, what, and you don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't even know what's going on inside this person. But, but there you, you reject them. What, 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 what does that say to God? See, sometimes we're worried about the other people and their opinion, but we never care about God and his love for a broken person sitting down right next to you. And all you needed to do was say, how are you today? And who knows what, what, what an effect a, a kind word can have to somebody. Now, not just a handshake and a good morning, but, but my friend, how, how are you today? You look like the world's beating you down. Are you all right? Is everything going to be okay? Can, can I pray for you? The, the, the power of prayer and asking, can I pray for you? So it sometimes has a profound effect uh, in people's lives. You know, you don't want them to come to church as they're thinking, this is my last day. And they go home, and, and it is their last day, because even in the house of God, God could not be seen, couldn't be found. See, it's a house of hope and, and prayer. Who's going to provide that hope and that prayer? And the children. The children of God. And so we've got to be careful of what we're doing and who that battle is against. You know, sometimes we can look and see, hey, he's broke down, you know. I, I don't know. I don't really want to get involved in, in this guy's life, you know. Shoot, you open the door there, and oh, we'll be sitting here for a half hour. He's just spilling his guts out, you know. And, or maybe we'll see that they're broke down, and, and we feel guilty or ashamed or something like, hey, I, you know, don't be looking at that guy. He's hurt. Leave him alone. But, but we got to realize that it, it's through caring hugs, love kind words that, that God is seen and felt. And there's no greater place on, on earth that, that God would like to be seen and felt than, than in his very own house. In his very own house. So be aware when, we're, when you're at church. We, we don't know. No matter what people look like physically, we, we don't know what storm they're walking through. We don't know what battle that they are going through. So, so we got to be aware and, and see each and every person equally the same. If we saw each person just as Jesus Christ, as you know, that was Jesus sitting there, it would be different, right? I don't know. We, we killed Jesus. So, so would it? And, and that's the thing we got to look at today. We've got to really look in the mirror. Look at, at ourselves 
and, and who we are. And what do we want? What do we want? You know, sometimes we want peace here on earth. Peace in our homes and our families and everything we see. We want peace. But, but we don't want to be a part of, of making the peace. You know, when it comes to looking in us, what, what are we doing to get the peace? <laughs> does, does my peace come from you, you telling me I'm doing a good job? Does your peace, my peace come from, from your recognition? Or, or does the peace come from death? From, from God? You know, we can go to church and maybe we're not the greeters. Maybe we're not people who are deacons or deaconess. And we don't have the title. I'm just the new guy. Or whatever. But, but we know what is right. We don't have to wait for somebody else to do it. And when they don't do it right, well, boy, if you would have only did it this way. But, but there we could have went and, and did it. We could have sat there right next to the poor fellow sitting next to us and, and did what God wanted us to do. And they love him or her as we would ourselves. You know, we're all seeking God. We all want to go to heaven. That, that's, that's, that's the goal. That's the humanity's goal. Whether, whatever religion we decide or whatever, we're still seeking to go to heaven, an everlasting life, a place far greater than this place. And that's what we got to remember and work for. You know, we, we were so willing to work so hard for, for this world. And recognition coming from other people. But, but we don't really work for, for our eternal life. Because if the eternal life ha has value for us, then doesn't it have value for them or, or anybody else? <clears throat> That's the thing we got to realize. No matter who we are on, on earth, no God, <laughs> no love. No God, no salvation. No God, no forgiveness. No God, Life stinks, pain, suffering, great sorrow. We, we find God and still pain, suffering, and sorrow. But, but what do we have? We have hope. We have faith that there's a better tomorrow. That in an hour it's always going to be better because our dad cares about us and he's going to make a better way. He's going to clear the way for us. And that's where faith and trust comes. You know, even if somebody comes and rejects us, we, we can bounce that off through faith. I, I don't need your approval. I got God. He's with me. And although right now is tough, but we're going to move forward. It's funny how, how life, works, you know, and when we're weak, man, when we're weakest point in our life, and we're broke down, we're exalting God like crazy. God is so big, come and deliver me. But when we're up here in life and everything's great, <coughs> where's God? <coughs> it's kind of weird how that works, so <coughs> through our weakness, God is strongest. And, and we got to recognize that too. You know, people come to church because they're weak, because they're broke. They need a doctor, need help, need fixed, need healed. And who's going to provide all those things? And you, us, the, the body of Christ, the, the fingers and the toes. <laughs> Right? Why, why the fingers and the toes? Because the fingers and the toes do stuff. You can't do anything without fingers and, and toes. You know, you got to walk, you got to grab, you got to do. God can only be seen through our actions. People come to church to get those things. Well, that's the fruit of God. 
is kindness. Well, that's what they want. I want the fruit of God, your kindness. I didn't come here to shake your hand in the morning and be off the door. I came here to make a friend. And we need to be aware. And that's not just a stranger, that's our brother and our sisters. You know, we don't pay favoritism. God has no favoritism. God has love for the wicked. That's how much gracious God is. Maybe their life is like a blade of grass and they're here today and gone tomorrow. But, but while they're here, God gives them sun. God gives them rain. God gives them food. Some of those, God gives everything. Millions of dollars, cars, stuff. That, that's the love of God. But, but, you know, some of us want more than that. You know, we don't want 80 years of, of good pleasure and good times here on earth. We want an eternal kingdom, an eternal life with God. Let me read to you a little piece here. Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? We're talking about the parable of the sower. Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? That's Jesus speaking to the disciples. Notice, every word Jesus ever speaks, everybody, what? What? What did he say? Even the disciples are constantly asking him, Lord, Lord, interpret that for us. And that's the thing with the Christ and the spirit of the Christ. You can't understand no part of the Bible without Jesus. You can't understand the kingdom of God without Jesus. And you definitely can't love or know Jesus unless you love the children of Jesus. You know, you can't love God unless you love me. I can't love God unless I love you. And we got to see that. We got to recognize that. You know, and what spirits are guiding our lives? You know, we, we always want the, the glory of God, all the credit, right? When something goes right, when we're doing something good, boy, we want all the credit. All of it. And that's where the rejection comes in, when we don't get the credit. But, but all credit and glory and honor go, go to God. And that's the thing with us. You know, we're, we're so eager to get the glory and the blessings. And when it goes wrong, we're, we're right away pointing the finger of, of why it went wrong. What went wrong. But, but very rarely do we look at ourselves to see, hey man, did everything go wrong because of me? Because I wouldn't obey God? I wouldn't agree with God? And obeying God, you know, comes faith. That's the obedience of God. Have faith in Him. Have the trust in Him. You know, we're all broke down and worn out because only 7% of the Christians pay tithes. That, that's broke down. We're broke. We're sick. And what are we broke down and sick of? No trust. The, the devil is doing his job and he's doing it well. He's broke into the church and can do it so well. He, he can make people go in and think they're going to come out with the love of God and the glory and the blessings of God. And there you go walking out conquered, defeated, hurt, and broke down, rejected. And, and those on both sides fulfilled the will of the devil. Pulling us out of that glory of God. Making us feel ashamed. Making us feel conquered. Man, I don't want to go to church now. Well, great. He won. It's the thing. It's who do you want to please? God, who are we going to obey? The trust in God? Because the trust is totally broken. We need to trust God. It's a very important parable. The farmer sows the word. Some people are like 
seeds along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes it away. The word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds thrown on the rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, it lasts for only a short time. Right? And where's the root come from? Where's the foundation come from? And it comes from the Word, reading the Word, studying the Word, and living it out. That's the other part of it. It's life. You know, and that's the thing. Trials of life come our way. You know, we hear the Word of God, <coughs> but when, when persecution comes, when, when we don't get the recognition we, we feel we deserve, right? Ah, screw it. I don't want to go to church. I will show them. I won't go. I ain't going to listen. You know? And you're only hurting yourself. And that's where it comes, you know, in the trials of life. You know, I can't pay the 10% tithe. It's not even a, a thought in my mind. And all you, your preachers are all wanting to steal the money. And many are. Many aren't revesting that money into the the glory of God, the spreading of the gospel, the producing of disciples. You know, that's the thing. We're supposed to be making and creating disciples. You know, and, and many people with great joy may go to the concert, may go to an evangelist thing and have a one-time great event there and hear the word of God and come on down to the altar, let's go and turn your life to Jesus Christ. And there they go, and great joy, and wonderful, they're forgiven. All sins are washed away and clean. And go, and live this life in joy. And life comes our way. You know, we still got the, the struggles of the trust. Don't trust it. I heard it, heard something, I like it. Oh yeah, I want to go to heaven. But... I don't want to trust it. I can't trust God. You know, that, that's where insurance comes in. People say, that's crazy. You're crazy. But no, it's, it's a lack of faith. People from the world, unbelievers, yeah, do, do whatever you got. You have no faith. You have no hope. And put your hope there. Put your hope in, in the hand of, of a man, and they will leave you hopeless. And you'll be broke down, down and out with, with nothing but you and God. And there the insurance people will suck you dry. And that's their goal. Suck you dry, leave you hopeless. And that's what happens when you get outside the will of God. Suck you dry and leave you hopeless. And maybe that's why when, when life comes and all this stuff comes and beats us down and we ain't got nothing left of this world. And not even friends, family, whatever. Nothing left. But, but God, might as well praise God, I guess, and we exalt Him. We cry out, and things do turn around for many of us. And you can see our lives. You can see it in the way they have transformed their lives from broke down hopelessness to, to, to total faith in God. You know, they're there every week at church. And not there every week at church to, to just go and worship and, and read and praise God, but they're there every week at church so, so God could be seen through them because they understand, hey man, this guy sitting right next to me could be his last day. And I'm going to make a difference in that guy's day. Just as God transformed me, I, I will help. By transforming his day with kind words and a you know, pat on the back and, and a hug. And, Man, how are you been? Where you been? I haven't seen you in so long. I missed you. Are you okay? How's your day? Sometimes how's your day goes a long way. Right? But since there was no root, Last only a short time. 
When troubles or persecutions come because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds thrown among the thorns, hears the words, but the worries of life and the deceitfulness of the wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke it out. You know, sometimes that's the thing with the world, watching the, the, the news. Again, what spirits are we listening to? And those things on the news, war, death, violence, murder, you know, they have a big effect on us. That, that could come into our heart and begin to hurt us. And Jesus doesn't want that. God doesn't want us to be hurt. And that's the devil trying to sting us with poison. Like a scorpion, he'll sting you. And that poison begins to fester in us. And we begin to cry out and bring sorrow and pain to our life. And through the smallness of who we really are, and the reality of, hey man, we can't carry the burdens of the entire world. We can't carry the burdens of this next state over. I can't carry the burdens of the whole city. But, but only those right next to us, only those we can touch, feel an effect in our lives. And sometimes those things can weigh us down. We begin to question God. Where's that rapture? Where's that rapture? Aren't you going to rapture us, God? Save us from the trials, the tribulations, and the calamity? It begins to frustrate you. And stay away from that. That's the devil using hate, anger, fear to destroy your relationship with God. May make you see those other brothers and sisters as being worthy to be hated. You know, sometimes one man, one bad apple, destroys the whole bundle. And we've got to be careful of who we get caught up on and who's, who are we judging. You know, we've got to remember that, that God chose us. God chose us. And that separates us from the rest. <laughs> Not really our, our lives, but the fact God loves us and chose us to be a part of His good deeds. A part of His will. And that is to, to shine the, the light of God through our bodies, through our lives. It says, and he says, the wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Unfruitful. So sometimes we're, we're so worried about our finances, our situation, worries of life, that we're not have the time or the ability to, to have and give good kind words to people. You know, oh, I'd love to go to church, but I don't have the time. You know, many people work seven days a week. You know, you want to not get a job, tell people I don't work on Sunday. Never. Because that is my holy day. And one, they'll see you're religious, and they won't hire you just for that. And two, you know, they, they, everybody wants you to work on Sunday. So, so they themselves themselves. Can, can go and be with their families while, while you slave for the devil. While, while you are, are separated from, from God's love. You know, it's important. Keep the, the Sabbath day holy. And today, that, that, that's kind of just walked all over. You know, we don't see any part of, of God's kingdom being worthy to our lives. As having eternal value. Sometimes the career, the money... The car payment, the insurance payment, has a greater value than another human being. And it's true. All across America, it's true. We have the God-given right to be holy children, to live, to die, to be born in dignity. But, but America sees it different. 
Your, your dignity, your worth, and your right to live comes through your money and, and your gold. But but every sporting event across America, they sing God bless America. But Jesus Christ is obviously not their God because they would say, Jesus Christ, come bless America. Because he's the living God and he's our father. But they're the number one country in, in, the, na in the world who loves insurance because they're the faithless, most faithless country out there. You're like a whore. You don't trust God. So, other, others, like seeds thrown on the good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. 30, 60, even a hundred times. That was so. And he continued speaking. Do you bring in a lamp and put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. And whatever is concealed is meant to be brought into the open. If anyone has ears, let him hear. Consider carefully what you hear. He continued. With the measure you use. It will be used to you, and even more. Right? Whoever has, will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from him. Right? It's all our gold, our wealth, our cars, our stuff. It's all worthless. It has no meaning has no purpose in our lives uh, other than to fulfill our desires, our heart, our evil desires. Right? Be because if the Word of God was down there deep in the good soil in our heart, yeah, insurance payment, it doesn't matter. 10% tied to God never gets missed, even if that means this gets missed. I see a homeless person broke down and hurt. Yeah, money's coming out of my pocket. I'm going to help that man out. I'm going to take care of him. I'm just going to give him $2. Or I'm going to buy him a room for the night. You know, that's the thing we got to understand. It's through our sins. Our sins, you know, are our fulfilling the heart's desire of our evilness, our, our flesh, that, that the world suffers. That the others suffer. And they pay for our sins here on earth. You know, the world starves to death because the car payment is so much more important than, than starving man. People, people die each and every day with no help, totally alone, without anybody. Because they're so afraid to go to the doctor because they know they're just going to send me home anyway. You're just going to reject me anyway. So they don't go and they die. We don't want to, you go to the doctor feeling like a total worm, piece of crap, because you're so unworthy, because you didn't have the, the gold platinum insurance or, or the proper stuff. And it's through our sins, our greed, our untrusting. Did these other people pay for it here on earth? Well, what's God going to do when he comes to take us home? Who's going to pay for it then? Remember Lazarus and the rich man? You know? Lazarus, Lazarus got nothing but bad things here on earth. So that's the thing, it's to, to what measure? You know, you, you, you sow sparingly and you will reap sparingly. You know, you put forth no effort into God. You're, you're always wanting to be defeated. You know, you're going to let somebody else's opinion take you from the hand of God outside the church so you're out there on your own. You know, things 
are going to get tough. It's not going to be good. Just do your major. How, how much do you want it? You know, if you want to grab on to the grace of God, look at the measure he used to, to save us. <laughs> he dumped it all out. His whole life, his whole body. You know, he, he even came down from the glory of heaven to, to be from a God to, to, to a human being. You know, that's how far he was willing to stoop down to, to gain a, a believer, to, to gain a child. He didn't just gain one, he gained so many children they can't be counted. Because that's the greatest thing of love. That's the greatest act of love. There's no greater thing of love that you can offer this earth than, than to lay down your life for a brother or a sister. You know, and that's us today. How willing are we to, to lay down our lives, our respect, our gratification here on earth for a brother or sister? You know, and you say, well, at some point we got to give up. And we got to walk away. And we got to shake our dust off. That we're not going to get the respect we deserve or do. So we're going to move on and we're going to find a new crowd. And I just got to remind everybody that, that when Jesus died, the holiest people on earth killed him. The best the earth had to offer killed him. And he did it anyway. He did it anyway. You know, he didn't come to die for the good man, for the righteous man, but for you, for us. He, he did it anyway. They didn't appreciate it, didn't even know, don't care, bother, they don't even know what they're doing. I'm going to do it anyway. Because that's the love of God, to lay down your life for a brother who doesn't even care or appreciate it. I'm going to do it anyway. And we need that heart. We need that heart in that mind of God. This life means nothing. It's the next one. That we will die. It's the next one. That that means everything. It's the will of God that that not one child will be left behind. Not one. <clears throat> so let's quit waiting to be raptured. And let's do like he said. Be doing exactly what we are supposed to be doing when he turns. Shouldn't he find his children working away, living in, in love, seeing one another? Seeing one another as being holy children of God, even when they don't believe it? We, we still believe it because we know the truth, because the truth lives in us. And the truth is, God is love. So if we have no love, we have no God. Let me leave you with the reading. <coughs> Psalm 119. You know, we read a lot of the Psalms, but rarely do we go into Psalm 119, because it's kind of a touchy psalm. You know, so let's listen. Happy are they whose ways are is blameless, whose walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart and do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded that your precepts may diligently kept, may be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Then should I not be put to shame. When I beheld your commandments, 
I will give you thanks with an upright heart. And I will learn, and I have learned, when I have learned, your just ordinance. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. And that's David, you know. What's the statutes and the precepts and the teachings of God? Trust in Him and He will deliver you. Trust that the mighty power of God through Him, through His name, through our prayers, all things are possible. You know, what, what law? That's the law of faith. You know, D David didn't live by the law, the Ten Commandments, but, but by faith in God. You know, yeah, we, we could see David was a sinner through the law. That's what sin, that's what the law shows, is sin. But, but just through faith, that, that we can be delivered through, from that sin. It's through the study of his word. You know, change that word law into teachings and instructions of God. The whole Bible is there to teach you how to love somebody who, who can't be loved. <laughs> teach you how to trust in God. When all the world and everything around you seems in telling you God can't be trusted. Well, I'm going to trust him anyway. You know, like Daniel and Meshach and Abednego, Shadrach. You know, the whole world. And probably their, their very flesh. It's telling them that God can't be trusted. You know, they, they just got taken, ripped out of their home country. Taken to be slaves. Sitting back at home, living with mom and dad. And here, you're ripped out of your home, taken to a foreign country. You know, hey, we're the God of Israel. Where is God? And there they are in this foreign land. Great fear. Scared. Rejection? Boy, you want to feel rejection. You know, here's mom and dad one day and all my friends going to school. And then the next day, I'm beat down, broke down. Living as a slave. And then they come and it's going to attack your faith. Boy, you don't bow down to our God, and we're going to throw you in the fire. You know, and all you guys thought your great sin, lack of trust and faith in God, look, he handed you over to my hand. Now, now bow down to the, the to Nebuchadnezzar in the statue. And they wouldn't do it. You know, no matter how dark this world is, no matter how dark anything is, we're going to have faith. Even when the world and everything tells you, don't trust in God, you're still going to have faith. Because our faith is in so much greater thing. He, even if God doesn't deliver us from the fire, He will deliver us from your hand, and you'll never touch me again. The day I'm gone from this world, I'll never return. And I'll be there in the glory of God. There's no pain, suffering. Right there in my dad's bosom. You know, worst thing this world can do to us, send this home to daddy. That's the worst they can do. Send you to God. And that's faith. You know, that's the worst the world can do. Sometimes why is we so worried about, you know, the little things? You know, sometimes those little fiery darts, those words, do hurt. But we make those little fiery darts so much greater than, than, than the real big picture. You know, God does everything for our good. He even trials of life is for our good. You know, even though you see the world ready to destroy itself. Right now, more people are turning to Jesus Christ and God than, than ever before. And that's the love of God. That's the grace of God. There's only one way to be delivered from, from anything. Trial, suffering, rejection. And that's through God. Isn't that what Jesus Christ come to show us? 
Hey man, this word, this stuff, everything comes from the angels and God said He loves us so much, you put all your faith into His word and He will deliver you. And the whole world told him, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. And then they killed him. They tried to. <laughs> and then he rose. God rose him up to say, look, his word is true. You put all your faith and your trust in God, and I'll deliver you from death, from the worst this world has to offer. I'll deliver you from that. And if I'll deliver you from the greatest, from the biggest thing this world has to offer our death, how much more will he deliver you in the little things of life? How much greater is his opinion of my worth than that man who has no control over my life? No control over anything unless I give it to him. But I'm not going to give him my control over my life anymore or my worth anymore. But I'm going to put it into the hand of God who delivers men from death. His word, every word is true. Just as God loved Jesus Christ to do not let his son be shamed. He will do the same for you. Do the same for you. I want to leave you with one more read. Zechariah chapter 3. Verse 1. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. While Satan stood at his right hand to accuse him. And the angel of the Lord said to Satan, May the Lord rebuke you, Satan. May the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is not this man a brand snatched from the fire? Right? So that's one thing you can expect for in the future when we see God. And there's the devil standing right there at your right hand and you have God and all the angels there. And the devil's going to say, look, look how bad he was. Look how horrible he did. He did everything wrong. He did everything wrong. He didn't trust you, God. He didn't trust you. He, he didn't pay his 10% tithe. He didn't do any of this stuff. And, and, and this is what they will say. Now Joshua was standing before the angel, clad in filthy garments. He spoke and said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy garments and clothe him in festival garments. He also said, Put a clean mitre on his head. And, and they put a clean mitre on his head and clothed him with the garments. Then the angel of the Lord standing said, See, I have taken away his guilt. <laughs> Right? Trust and obey. Well, what did God say to Joshua as they were just, you know, Moses just died and he was giving Joshua the authority to take over and rule Israel, take them over to the Jordan? What did he say? Joshua, four times, Joshua, be strong and be courageous. Joshua, I, I want you to just be strong. And no, I'm with you. Joshua, be strong and courageous. I, the Lord your God, is with you. And I will deliver you. All you got to do is be strong and courageous. And I will be with you. Be strong and courageous. Joshua made mistakes. He too was a man. But, but being strong and courageous. Trusting God that I can be strong and courageous wherever I am in life. Because He's with me. And there your reward will be. 
says, The angel of the Lord then gave Joshua this assurance. This says the Lord of hosts, If you walk in my ways and heed my charge, you shall judge my house and keep my courts. And I will give you access among these standing here. Listen, O Joshua, high priest, you and your associates who sit before you are men of good omen. Yes, I will bring my servant the shoot. Look at the stone that I have placed before Joshua. One stone with seven faucets. I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will take away the guilt of the land in one day. On that day, says the Lord of hosts, you will invite one another under your vines and fig trees. And that's today. You know, as we're, we're bringing back Jewish, you know, Judaism and Christianity and getting them to realize that, that the Lord our God is Jesus Christ. And He is the Christ of God, the Messiah, the Anointed One of God come to, to fulfill the, the prophecies. And that's going to happen quite soon. And when Jesus returns, that's the thing, that's what the Bible says. He's going to return for, for His children. And to give out justice for His children. So, so be careful. Make sure you're a child of, of God. Right? So, as we've read that, let me leave you with one more read, because I just want to give you some hope and get you to understand. Chapter 7, verse 9 of the book of Revelations. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from every tribe, and peoples and language, standing before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, whom sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen! Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Wow! Who is the temple of the Lord? We are that temple here on earth. Where, where are the temple of the Lord here on earth. You ever read, you know, in 1 Kings chapter 6 and 7 about how the temple, Solomon made the temple? You know, if you saw there in Moses' time, you know, they'd have the temple and it was just a bunch of tent, like a temporary thing, you know, and it'd have like, you know, tents or whatever skins or something for the walls and that and then Solomon made like a permanent temple an actual building and if you go through and look at all the time God put in that temple and Solomon and all the gold and all the fancy stuff and on the cut stones and even the rocks they use are the hardest rocks they could find and boy just to cut that rock down and they made everything perfect they put so much time and energy in it, and it took a great amount of time to even build. And they used all the best craftsmen, 
Gold, they didn't even use silver in that day. It was gold. And, 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 you know, some people say Solomon had like 20 tons of gold in the temple. And isn't that us? Isn't that the, the time and the effort God spends in making us who we are? Making us into the caring human being that God really wants us to be. I mean, you go back and look at all the time and the effort put into that temple. And then understand who we are that temple. That that's how precious the temple of the Lord is to God. And we're that temple. That's how precious we are to, to God. That that's the hard work He does. For us. You know, we're always so worried about our work. What are we going to do? Our works. Our, our works are dirty rags. We're going to die by our works. What about the work God does to, to make us? So some of us were pretty unloving. Pretty uncaring. Broke down so bad, never even knew that there was a possibility or a way to love. But, but God changed that. God can open your heart. And it comes to the love of Jesus Christ, to the washing of the blood of the Lamb. You know, Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire. And the water is the water of the Word, always watering our spirit in our lives. And that protects us from getting broke down into a place where the devil has a foothold on us. Where we are precious people of God. He says, Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The, sh the sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb in their midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of water and God will wipe away every tear from every eye. Isn't that Jesus Christ? Isn't that God who, who places springs of water in any places, in all random places, even to a place where you thought you would never come or see? And here you are today to, to be filled with the springs of water, to be filled with the hope, to, to be filled with an everlasting promise. You know, Jesus Christ promised each and every one of us that He will be with us every day to the end of the world. And He will be your guide, He will be your comforter, He will be your deliverer, and He will be your salvation. He'll be your strength. You'll be his precious, precious child from every day, forevermore. That's the promise of God, that he'll be with us every day to the end of the world. Trust in that. Trust in, in, in that word. If there's anything we can trust in, we can trust in that he will be with you every day to the end of the world forevermore trust in God in everything you do and your life will be blessed see you next time